different town, same story. <laughs> Ankel Sergi is back in a, in a traffic jam. Uh, there's an accident up ahead. Uh, people on the radio are saying a pickup truck flew over the railing or something. This is Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I got here uh, from Buffalo, New York via I-90 East to Erie, PA, I-79 South, and then US-19 South, and then I-77 to Statesville. And then from Statesville there was uh, US, which is Highway 70, going southeast towards uh, Salisbury. Salisbury, North Carolina, that's where I delivered my rolls of rubber. A guy with a big forklift took them off. He was pretty nervous. That narrow one was a bit, you know, tricky. He was not very stable. Uh, he was very tense when he was taking it off. So anyway, so that load is delivered. And now I have a big deadhead ahead of me, but the load pays pretty good, so... Uh, I'm heading to uh, Maryland so the idea here is to catch uh, 81 uh, basically I'm going back the same way uh, I could have gone but I had a feeling that I didn't want to go through through uh, Winston-Salem my GPS was sending me like this go through Winston-Salem and then go to Salisbury from this end from the east Whereas I decided to stay away from the, you know, it's a big city, right? And you see there's construction here. And I spent the night in Witherville, Witherville, Virginia. That TA over there, Travel Centers of America, exit 41 on, on uh, I-77. It was all booked up, so I just went across the street. And also managed to get fuel over there my fuel card worked and I saved about 10 cents per gallon but I just got one tank because uh, I thought I would find fuel cheaper but now I'm, I'm heading to Maryland it's not gonna be cheap over there and basically I'm picking up some part of uh, 25,000 pounds uh, oversize uh, part of uh, Printing press, uh, press. They sent me a picture. It looks like a box with uh, six support legs. Kind of like a like a garbage container. Only it has three legs, about four feet uh, long on each side. You know, it's like a multi-legged structure with the top at the top. I noticed that the uh, license plates in North Carolina look very similar to Ontario license plates, especially when they are worn out, like this pickup truck ahead of me. Uh, the, bra the brand is Ord, it's probably an old one, O-R-D, that's what it says on the tailgate of the truck, never heard of it, O-R-D. woman is behind the wheel and what I know is that the left lane is blocked so like a good boy I go into the right lane right but all these guys on the left and there were messages posted on the on this electronic signs above above the highway like this I saw them four miles it says crash four miles ahead left lane blocked then Two miles later, it said crash. Two miles ahead, left lane blocked. And of course, left lane is full of cars. Uh, but you know, I don't want to go there because then nobody will let me in. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to where I'm going? Uh, Hagerstown, Hagerstown, Maryland. Actually, I think they make uh, something for Max. Isn't there where the Volvo engine plant is? I think. And they also make uh, like the engine for my truck. 
is made at the same at the same plant only they color it differently and they put the word Mac and it's shaped a bit differently on the top so it does look different some people say oh it's the same engine I don't think it is the same engine I think it's just kind of like a I wanted to stress again is that Mac has been making its own engines for a very long time long before Volvo and the problem was from what I read is that they couldn't they were not able to meet the emissions the emissions uh, you know the new laws and so they and then of course I think they went bankrupt or something right Volvo bought them but that's why Volvo basically made the uh, the max engine legal so that's what I think I think it's a Mac engine it just has the emissions uh, stuff from Volvo and I mentioned this before I once was standing next to a Volvo guy and he had a DD 13 and we opened hoods and we compared and my engine did look different not just the color, but like the shape and how the way the hoses are connected, you know. But yeah, it's a 13 liter engine, but this particular one is much stronger because mine has 1860 torque, you know, it's like a, for heavy haul. Okay, so things are moving. Yeah, so in Ontario we have the same uh, blue lettering on the license plate but the color is the blue is not as bright as here and I think British Columbia British Columbia in Canada also has a blue blue color but again it's a slightly different shade you know you can see that it's not from British Columbia or Ontario like when I look at this Jeep ahead of me and the typeface, you know, the typeface is always different. Like the shape of uh, uh, letters. Oh boy. Now look at the trees over here. This is still North Carolina, Highway 52. Uh, northbound. All trees are green. to get to 81 as soon as I'm on I-81 north that's it I'll be I'll be on that one for like five hours you know till I reach Maryland and I love 81 there's no big hills like really you no know, especially you know I'm empty but it's not it's much better than these roads over here like I-79 you know I-77 so my GPS says 20 kilometers or uh, 17 miles to the junction with 81 and my speed ladies and gentlemen I'm sorry to say is zero kilometers an hour what's that in miles per hour it's been raining really bad I had to use my wipers at the like maximum speed pretty happy that I have a load uh, back coming back and the only thing is I'll probably won't make it oh I talked to the guys that there's some Canadian guys look 
like they bought something from um, from that uh, printing factory and I, I left him a message and then he calls me back and I was wondering why is the 416 area code because that's Toronto Ontario right and they say shipper call Maryland call the shipper to make sure they wait for you if I'm there late and it's a 416 number I thought they made a mistake no I call it's a cell so it's Canadian guys went there for a job probably a riggers or something or they bought this thing like part of the printing press and I left a message the guy calls me back he says okay so how far are you I said, well I am probably seven hours away it says uh, 600 kilometers or 360 miles but it will take me much longer than six like I'm not a car and then I got this like jams construction and the guy said well we're here we can load you tomorrow but we'd rather it be today it'll take only like 10 minutes to load you they just lift this thing you back under it yeah but I just need to uh, you know get my uh, outrigger boards out put them on the sides because this thing is about what they say nine feet six inches wide is Hyundai Santa Fe 3.5 liter look at the sign uh, license plate blue but you see the difference on the left is a BMW uh, also blue but this is our Ontario plate it's the guy from Ontario so our numbers are kind of like I don't know how to say it. I think it's uh, more modern like the typeface is more simpler and the colors are deeper okay getting close to the to the to the scene of the accident some guy was saying mile marker uh, between 20 and 21 and I have no idea how far I am from from uh, that place but Stand by for the update. That uh, dry van is blocking, but I see uh, overhead sign. Just basically 100 meters, uh, 300 feet. And the dry van is moving to my left. Jeez, move to the right. Come on. I cannot read. You know, you, you you're blocking the picture. What's wrong with you? Jeez. No, but seriously, I saw he was drifting. He probably looked into his mirror. And that's uh, another uh, observation I can share here is that if you're following a truck and the guy start, starts drifting to the left from the cur in the curb lane, that means that he, he is looking in, the, in his left mirror, in the driver's side mirror. I'm serious. For some reason, whenever we truckers look in the mirror, right or left like passenger side or okay mile market 22 watch for slow traffic uh, left lane block mile market 22 so yeah whenever we uh, look in the mirror the truck usually starts drifting towards that side so if you look in the passenger side mirror the truck will start drifting to the to the right <laughs> and if you look in the driver side mirror you'll start drifting to the left and it's still raining. It's been raining, I don't know, for the past six hours. This is still I-81 North. Yeah, somebody was 
small excavators, uh, back holes. That's how my uh, trucking career started. Look, look like you got a smoky bear coming up the shoulder over about the 141. What look like going up the shoulder? 142 with his down pistol and his siren. Are you guys saying it's an accident? Come out of hibernation. The rain just brings them out because they know the stupid people come out. Right, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Where is this accident at? Only time when they come out is when people get stupid. Uh -huh. Anybody knows what uh, mile mark of the accident is at? They say 142. Well, they are going to lose the left lane up there because uh, the flash and arrow, the v dock setting up there in the left hand lane. guys gonna see anything but this is this is what I picked up it's pretty tall structure at the top on the top basically like a big box with some legs and uh, just as I thought I was here at 8 o'clock, so it took us like 15 minutes to load this thing. They just had two forklifts on both sides. And I didn't even have to use my own outrigger boards because they had the, these custom made. Um, and so I just backed under. Let me just show you the other side. Yeah, see? So that's what I have. So I'm going to tie it down tomorrow. Probably said to use a chain somewhere around here on all ends and then they want me to put some straps over because that's just like a walnut tarp and all they have underneath is some plywood and it's not secure so they said if this that cheap top rips that plywood can just you know fly off and and kill a deer or something you know yeah, so I use my outrigger, you see our triggers over here. Our triggers are in the out position. That's how they look when uh, I don't need them. 
and then you just lift them up and you can turn them can you see so they act as a support for this thing and so yeah I drove all day today first uh, couple of hours to uh, to the shipper then those uh, rolls were off and right away they sent me to to these guys and basically it was a rush rush because uh, these two gentlemen uh, that were loading me they're actually from Canada and I guess they bought this uh, used uh, uh, thing it's like air conditioning right so it heats up uh, the uh, bad fumes from a printing press and kind of like a cleaner air conditioner all in one and they ordered a truck and the guy didn't show or said they don't want to do it or something like that you know and so I had to drive over here and there was nothing better this is a very nice very good load I don't have permits yet so I'll just secure it tomorrow uh, no rush and then uh, New York New York State you cannot drive after um, midday when you oversize anyway so if I get my permits tomorrow which I doubt I can probably get towards the border with uh, New York uh, and this is Hagerstown Maryland it was a very interesting drive as you saw from the previous uh, segments but it, it the weather was it was uh, raining pretty much non-stop ever since I left uh, Salisbury North Carolina and and once they loaded this the guys left in a pickup truck and I said they're gonna what go all the way to Canada today because it's about 400 miles and they said no at least we want to do like uh, you know some part of it I guess they'll just go to Breezewood or something like Breezewood PA that's where you can go from here like I-70 to I-76 West and there's Breezewood there's a hotels there um, you know and so I locked the truck and some guy showed up in another pickup truck I'm just I decided to go for a walk maybe see if I can find some hot water or coffee or tea or something and I'm walking down this very long driveway it's like half a mile you know like a kilometer to the back to the main road and some guy in a pickup truck uh, pulls up to me and he uh, opens the window and he says can I help you okay I said uh, well that's my truck over there and because I saw he was he was sitting not too far from my truck and then he turned around and was going after me you know I thought he wanted to steal my my uh, my fabulous hat over here so it turns out this guy is in charge of uh, you know security or something but it's a, it's a shutdown plant I guess they moved so they're just selling selling used equipment and I said no I'm a trucker that's my truck behind I cannot leave I said I'm just going for a walk I'll be back in the morning to secure the stuff and then I will leave and the guy said oh normally we lock the gate here for the weekend so it's a good thing that I ran into him uh, but then he said I saw your truck so I'm not gonna lock it I said okay if do you want me to move it like I can just close the gate with, and just leave the padlock on the top of it and he said oh it's okay have a good night I said okay you too sir and that was that so I went for a walk there's like a big bridge over here and you probably did like I don't know 15 minutes and on the way back and the road goes like crazy you know like this like a nice semi-circle and you can cut maybe five minutes if you walk across the field from the road from the main road to this driveway that you can basically there's no ditches nothing it's just a green grass but it's all dark so I was using this put it on my head you know when I was walking on the on the road I, I I turned on the red light put it on my forehead forehead so lots of lo lots of people were confused because I thought it was a bicycle backing <laughs> and then when I stepped off the pavement and went onto the grass of course now my old my feet are all wet because it had been raining now I'm walking and it's scary you cannot see anything I I I was really afraid to step into some kind of a, like a little stream you know because it's all hilly over here right 
uh, they can be like a puddle of water but no i i i aimed my uh, light you know right on the ground in front of me and it's i could see and i'm walking in total silence it's like planet mars and i only hear like distant cars behind me on the on the highway and all of a sudden i hear this <laughs> Jesus. i stop i look to my right there's a goose a goose standing like this you know like ready to fight and he looks at me and he's like you know stamping his or her feet and i and there's no other geese anywhere and it's it's pitch black dark pitch black and this goose sits in the middle of the field and i guess the uh, the the last thing this goose expected was to see uncle sergey <laughs> walk across so yeah he was you know trying to scare me away so i figured he has some either eggs or small small geese what do you call them chicken no ducklings no that's horses no wait <laughs> anyway Maybe he was protecting his uh, family, current or or will be family. But anyway, I said, "Be cool, buddy. I'm. I didn't see you, okay? And I just passed him. Like I don't know. It was like three meters, ten feet. But the the funny and stupid thing about these animals is that if he didn't do that, shh, I would never have noticed him. You know, because it's so dark, and I was walking past him right in a straight line." I don't know, like, you know, they have the brain the size of a, of a top of the pencil, like the tip of the pencil. What he thought? That I was doing like a circle, trying to ambush him and steal all the eggs. So he he makes this noise, and then, of course, I notice him. If I was a really bad guy, I would just grab him and, and cook a dinner or something. But, you know, I feel pretty good today because I'm making money. Yes, sir. And... It's a good week when I have two trips, double drop loads, back to back, you know. So I had to do some empty miles, so what? That's a double drop uh, business. It was my choice. I decided to go for a scenic drive on I-81. It was beautiful, except the people kept, uh, you know, cutting me off because the, this is a heavy haul truck. So the way it's packed is I don't want to go fast because I have 410 ratio, right? So I'm driving at 1450 RPM, which is 59 miles per hour. And people are going nuts. But of course the speed limit is 70. You know, I don't I don't blame them. So <laughs> But guys are like you know going in front of me, you know. Or oh, and you saw how many accidents there was? That was not like a repetition of the same segment. That's what I went through today. I lost about 90 minutes approximately there were three separate uh, accidents because the weather was so bad so i figured you know people are flying by you know the, the pavement is slippery but the interesting thing is that whenever i would hit the the jam and i was asking people on the radio right like where is the wreck you know where is the crash it was always gone by the time i reached the you know scene of the crime and the funny thing, last last thing, I don't think I showed this, but uh, there was one guy, you know, truckers sometimes do this, like when the left lane is blocked, so the, a truck would go in the left lane and just creep in there, you know, crawl along at the same speed as, let's say, me. And so he keeps everybody from going into the left lane because we all know left lane is closed, right? So then nobody can move, you know, all these guys will be flying. And we'll be there forever so he blocked that lane and everybody's like behaving you know the left lane in front of him is all empty like for miles on end you know and we're and we're crawling and crawling stop and go stop and go and finally i grabbed my mic and i said they is that lane still blocked and the guy says no they clean up the wreck the left lane is is wide open he says people are just kind of like stopping to see like there's nothing to see there was just some i don't know a rubber or a piece of metal on the on the grass and people were still slowing down even though the lane was open jeez i flipped my left signal on went in the left lane and then everybody you know saw me do this and everybody started driving but 
I don't know. People are like sheep, you know, like and they, <laughs> and and we're all sitting in the right lane. We're afraid to go in the left lane because we think it's blocked somewhere down there behind the horizon, you know. So, so that's when some people ask me, like, do I use CB? Yeah, I use CB, but only when it's an accident because it helps me to ask, you know, where is the crash so I can anticipate it, you know, which lane is blocked, left or right. I go, of course, I go in the lane that's open. So it's very useful, you know. But other than that, even now, I, I turn it on and right away some, you know, people started swearing at each other. Oh, okay, you stop your truck, I'll show you. Hey, who are you talking to? You know, like, Jesus, they're like kids, you know. So I turn it off and, uh, but anyway, it was a very, very long uh, trip. So I left, the, what, like 11.30? So I stopped for half an hour. So let's say 12. And so it took me eight hours of straight driving, including these jams, to do uh, basically what six uh, three, yeah, like 400 miles, 635 kilometers. So very long day today, but tomorrow is gonna be better. No rush, no fuss. Just secure the load, get the permits, find the truck stop, and you know relax till uh, till uh, Monday. Okay, so thanks for watching. Sorry for the long video again, but. Uh, I hope you guys liked it, uh, enjoy, have a good weekend.